Well, over the weekend, President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy finally struck a deal that would keep the country from defaulting on its loans. But what exactly does that deal include? Joining me now to discuss is political correspondent Joe St. George. Joe, thanks for being here. And uh, what does the debt limit deal look to change for the average American? Yeah, I think it's important to, rem to remember this isn't a landmark piece of legislation. I, I don't think it'll go down in the history books as, 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 as being a, a landmark bill, but it, it does what it is essentially meant to do, and that's raise the debt limit, prevent a default. It would raise the debt limit and get it through uh, next year's presidential election. So, Matt, you and I wouldn't have to talk about it uh, every single week. That's if this deal can actually uh, become, uh, become a law. But that being said, there are some modest changes in it that I think are worth noting for you, your family, perhaps a loved one. I think on screen we, we, we can ha share some of them. One, uh, this is important if you have federal student loans. Uh, if you were banking on permanent extensions from President Biden so you wouldn't have a monthly federal student loan payment, well, this bill gets rid of that. Uh, this bill would mandate 60 days after uh, it is signed, likely late August is when this would probably take effect, uh, your federal student loan payment would begin again. Now, we're still waiting on the Supreme Court to rule if there would be any forgiveness associated, so it's it's still a bit unclear what your total balance would be, uh, but this would would, would kick those, uh, those monthly payments back again. And for those on low-income food assistance programs like SNAP, new work requirements for those in 50 to 55. If you find yourself in that age group, you may have some new restrictions uh, coming your way uh, as a direct result uh, of this bill. Understanding what's in it, though, is important to understand the political realities of the moment. The reality, Matt, is that some Democrats don't like this bill and some Republicans don't like this bill. Some Republicans, they don't think it, it cuts spending enough, that there's a real debt problem in this country and that more spending needs to be cut. So they'll likely vote no as a direct result of that. Meanwhile, you have some progressives who are upset things like work requirements for SNAP run here. They're upset also that a, a pipeline in West Virginia is green lighted as a direct result of this legislation. That has uh, upset some progressives as well. So if this is going to become law, it's going to likely take a, a coalition of moderate Democrats and moderate Republicans because there'll be lawmakers on both sides likely voting no. Absolutely. All right. Well, a lot to take in as the country looks to avoid a financial crisis. And with that, we thank Scripps political correspondent Joe St. George for the insight. Yeah. We'll talk to you soon.